if real democracy is a means of politics, we can also say that democracy is an event with political consequences. Democracy is for us a pure prison between the past, the whole memory of revolutionary politics, and the future of emancipation. It reminds me of a great American poet, Wallace Stevens. It's in an extraordinary poem, the title of which is Description Without Place. You have to read the description without place. <coughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Description without place is for Stephen something like uh, the definition of poetry itself. Poetry has to be a description, but precisely a description without the place of description. A description which is beyond the descriptive place. We can remark that uh, classical politics, classical revolutionary politics, was something like an action with places. Action with places. Poetry, description without places, but classical revolutionary politics certainly action with places. Classes, nationalities, organization, state, and so on. Classical politics is action in a complex of places. And the classical definition of revolutionary politics is to size the power. But the power is a place. So finally, the classical definition of politics is to go in a place, to size a place. So classical politics is an action with place. But if we have to find a new way in politics, in a very complex distribution of truth, politics, democracy, philosophy, we probably have to find something like an action without place. And this is why Stevens can be a reference here. <coughs> Action without place. Action which is the transformation of something beyond the system of place. And politics without goal, like the size of power. Politics near the power, sometimes, but not defined by the power, not defined by any place. And in fact, in Description Without Place, the poem of Stevens, we can find Lenin. It's indeed very striking to see an American poet who mentioned Lenin uh, uh, at the date of uh, Stevens. And Stevens writes, the eye of Lenin kept the far off shapes. The eye of Lenin kept the far off shapes. Lenin for Stevens is the man who keeps the whole revolutionary past in his <coughs> mind, in his heart. Lenin sees the past, all the far-off shapes of the past. And that is probably the first dimension of democracy without place. To see the far-off shapes of the past. And Stevens writes also, what we say of the future 
most important be alive with its own seemings. What we say of the future, it's not the past, the future. What we say of the future must portend be alive with its own seemings. And democracy is always something which is said of the future. And it is why it cannot be the classical definition of the democratic state. If democracy is really inside a true politics, it is always something which is said of the future. We be alive with its own seemings in the future. Something which must portend. Something which appears like a new life. And between the far off shapes and the portending future. Democracy, when it happens, and finally democracy can happen, it cannot be, it cannot to be. Democracy, when it happens, is not exactly politics. Democracy is, for the philosopher, the promise of novelty in the political field. That is the vision of future in the democratic concept, the promise of novelty in the political field. Thank you. What happened to liberty? Somehow the, it came up at the beginning and was opposed to justice, nicht? and then we had to choose justice or liberty, and I refuse this choice, <coughs> because I think only a certain kind of liberty is really something I have to choose. So we have to ask a little bit more, what is liberty actually? Nicht? The liberty to, or the liberty from? The liberty from is certainly the one who is opposed to justice. But the liberty to is actually asking for the necessity yes. of justice. And liberty to justice. Yes. yes. So, so you have subordination of liberty to justice. Yeah, but it's not a right. It's, it's not yes. a subordination. No, it's a subordination. That is your mathematical mind here. You know, in, in my phenomenological mind, yes. they are merging. They are together. He said it's a new union of liberty and, uh, and uh, justice. justice right? The subordination would never really be liberty because there's always the idea of revolt in there. The subordinate can come up one day and say, I want to be number one here. But in my philological view, as looking at the phenomenon itself, it is clear that justice without liberty would, as a liberty which agrees to it, which that is our liberty to agree to it, mm -hmm. nicht, would be totally empty. Mm -hmm. you know, there is no, there is no, no, yeah, no fun, no joy in it. Mm -hmm. Then it would be this necessity of obligation, mm -hmm. you know, which is not the same. That is your, the obligation is the burden they put on us. Mm -hmm. It's not something we can embrace and love. So as in so far, I would beg you need to make the distinction within liberty, and one of them are together dancing, maybe tango, uh, <laughs> with justice. Okay. So, was as again my usual comment after. <laughs>